Now on BBC Two, Movie Drone presents the film noir masterpiece, Robert Aldridge's adaptation of Mickey Spillane's Kiss Me Deadly, introduced by Alex Cox. <laughs> Tonight, we present the ultimate Movidrome movie, a film that best embodies all the qualities that enable films to ascend to Movidrome status, Robert Aldrich's Kiss Me Deadly, made in 1955. Kiss Me Deadly has cult status in extremis. The film was highly controversial when it first appeared, both here and in the United States. In this country, several minutes of violence were removed by the censor, rendering certain scenes incomprehensible. The director, Robert Aldrich, was the director of cult masterpieces like The Big Knife and Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. We've shown more Aldrich films on Movie Drone than works by any other director. The script, by A.I. Bizerides, was based on a novel by Mickey Spillane, creator of the patriotic sadist private eye, Mike Hammer. Such was his identification with his creation that Spillane actually played the role of Mike Hammer in The Girl Hunters. Kiss Me Deadly is violent, and unlike many films made after it, it still retains the power to shock us, to make us feel uncomfortable. There's more than one horrible murder, and the character of Mike Hammer, chillingly underplayed by Ralph Meeker, is particularly nasty. Cowardly, manipulative, stupid, a bully, always lagging behind, getting in fights, doggedly trudging forward, beating up old men, music lovers, snooty concierges. Mike Hammer is the perfect anti-hero for Aldrich's cynical film noir thriller. Mike really has no idea what he's looking for. He only knows it's worth a lot of money, and he's after it by gad, no matter what the consequences. I hear you're a friend of Nicholas Romano. Raimondo. Yeah, that's right, Romano. I know nothing, nothing. Quite a stack of records you got here. Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, Caruso's Pagliacci. Caruso Pagliacci, el maestro. That's a collector's item. A collector's item, yeah. What's at stake here in Mike's big adventure is stolen, fissionable nuclear material, which is about as modern a MacGuffin as one could wish for. In fact, nobody knows what they're looking for. They just want money. Money. Money is what motivates people in this movie. Money and a love of capricious cruelty and revenge. Mike's apartment, naturally, is equipped with all the latest high-tech stuff. He even has a telephone answering machine. And the film certainly proves the old maxim that bad books make better films than good books do. To wit, the existence of at least six features based on the pulp fiction of dubious Jim Thompson as against only three based on Dashiell Hammett's literary detective tales. Most of the violence in Kiss Me Deadly, by the way, happens off camera, but it's atrocious nevertheless. And by the end of the film, this viewer actually starts enjoying Mike Hammer's automatic resort to strong-arm tactics, forcing the old gentleman to part with his key and wiping the smile off the face of the desk clerk. Kiss Me Deadly was photographed by Ernest Laszlo. His work is excellent. Watch out for a long take at the boxing gymnasium and, of course, a spectacular finale. Supporting Mika is a fine cast, including Albert Decker, alias Dr. Cyclops, Cloris Leachman, of Last Picture Show fame, and Jack Elam, the guy whose eyes go like that, veteran of multiple westerns. And at the outset, note the direction that the credits go in. You may not have noticed, or probably you have, that film or TV credits always roll in one direction, from bottom to top. Here they run in the opposite direction. There are those who say the plot of Kiss Me Deadly has been lifted for various films, among them Repo Man. Uh, uh. 